welcome to the Daily Encouragement from the Metro Church of Christ in Gresham, Oregon. I am Rick Edgman. Well, tomorrow is Mother's Day. And I got to thinking about how moms teach us a lot of different lessons. I know that my mom did, and some of these may sound familiar to you. My mother taught me how to appreciate a job well done. She would say things like, if you're going to kill each other, do it outside. I just finished cleaning the house. And then my mother would teach me about religion. She'd say things like, you better pray that that stain is going to come out of the carpet. Uh, my mother taught me about time travel. She'd say things like, if you don't straighten up, I'm going to knock you into the middle of next week. She taught me about logic. She would say things like, because I said so, that's why. And my mother taught me about irony. Keep crying, and I'll give you something to really cry about. My mother taught me about the science of osmosis. Shut your mouth and eat your supper. My mother taught me about stamina. You'll sit there until all of that spinach is gone. My mother taught me about anticipation. She'd say, just wait until we get home. My mother taught me about genetics. She'd say, you're just like your father. My mother taught me about wisdom. She'd say, when you get to be my age, you'll understand. My mother taught me about justice. She'd say, one day you'll have kids and I hope they turn out just like you. I grew up with a loving, caring mom. My mom cared for me deeply, but I missed my mom a lot because she worked a full-time job. She worked 40 to 50 hours a week. I grew up with many different moms, and I think a lot of us did. What I'm talking about are those women who took on the role of being like a mom. My mom, as I said, was not a stay-at-home mom. She needed to work so that the bills could be paid. And I'm deeply thankful to my mother. I, I know that she loved me and that she sacrificed a lot for me and for my brother and sister. But I'm also thankful to the other moms I had in my life. Uh, some of these other moms had their own children, but others of them didn't have any physical children of their own at all. A and many of them looked to be the mom of the neighborhood to the other kids. All of them, over my adolescence and into my teen years, were like a mother to a kid who needed to have someone at those moments in the kid's life when he needed a smile and an understanding hug. They were there when I needed to have a tear wiped away when I was hurt, or to really listen to me when I told them about the terrible, rotten, no good day that I was having. These were women, my extra moms, who would give me a piece of wisdom concerning the tough questions on life, questions like, why doesn't anyone want to play with me? Now, don't get me wrong. Again, my birth mom did all those things, but because of her work, I needed someone while she was gone. And that's what I want to encourage you about today. All of you. You have the opportunity to make a difference in the life of a child. Whether you're a single person, a married person, or whether or not you are even whether or not you even have your own physical children, you can be the guiding light of a child who desperately needs someone to love them and give them good godly direction. In Titus chapter 2, verses 1 through 8, Paul the Apostle gives direction to a young Titus, a young preacher, as well as giving direction to all men and all women of faith. He gives them direction to be people who teach others in the important things of life. Even though Paul didn't have any physical children of his own, he had written instructions to Titus who had become like a true son to Paul, as mentioned in Titus chapter 1, verse 4. Paul wrote to Titus in chapter 2. He wrote to him on how we can be like spiritual parents to others. 
Sometimes that even includes teaching someone older than us how to act like a mature person. All of these instructions concerning how to be a spiritual parent to somebody else applies to any of us who claim Jesus Christ as our Lord. Listen to what Paul wrote in Titus chapter 2, beginning in verse 1. You must teach what is in accord with sound doctrine. <clears throat> teach the older men to be temperate, worthy of respect, self-controlled, and sound in faith, sound in love and in endurance. Likewise, teach the older women to be reverent in the way they live, not to be slanderers or addicted to much wine, but to teach what is good. Then they can train the younger women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled and pure, to be busy at home, to be kind, and to be subject to their husbands, so that no one will malign the word of God. Similarly, encourage the young men to be self-controlled. In everything, set them an example by doing what is good. In your teaching, show integrity, seriousness, and soundness of speech that cannot be condemned. Paul had encouraged Timothy, excuse me, Titus, in how to live that life and how we are to live that life also. And so I hope that your day of recognition will be a great one. In May of every year, we celebrate Mother's Day, and in June of every year, we celebrate Father's Day. And I'd like to say Happy Parents' Day to all of you. All of you who take the time to love and encourage and teach a child in the way they should go. Would you pray with me, please? Father, give us the wisdom to be a loving and encouraging spiritual parent to all children and to one another. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a wonderful day.